Experts warn individuals are becoming radicalized faster than ever, all thanks to social media. And some of these extremist groups are becoming harder to track. I wish I could say that my job was getting easier as we go forward, but there are so many threats that we're facing in so many different fronts. New tonight, we are continuing our conversation about extremism. 41 Action supporter Eric Rothfield talked with a man who left one of those groups and is now helping others. With extremism on the rise, the news can often feel dark, overwhelming, and hopeless. But we wanted to show you that people can change, including white supremacists, like Scott Ernest. Well, when you get into it, uh, there's there's an addictive quality quality to it. Uh, there's addictive quality to uh, you know pretty much any form of extremism. As Scott Ernest sits in his car, he looks back at his past. But I don't want people to follow my footsteps in ever getting there in the first place, because uh, it's much easier to get people out if they're never there in the first place. He's what is known as a former, short for former white supremacist. Something he says he fell into when he was looking for a community to be part of. I I didn't know anything about the movement then. I definitely didn't really pay much attention to, you know, uh, you know, either side. Online, Ernest found camaraderie, and in 2011, he moved to Montana, joining Kalispell Pioneer Little Europe, a white nationalist group identified and tracked by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Once I started getting involved, it became my day, my day to day life. And when that happens, you don't want to change anything, you know, uh, you want to just keep doing it and you want to escalate. Ernest became a recruiter and said he normalized hate to lure in new believers. I didn't want the PLA to be just another group where it was a bunch of fringe people doing fringe things, saying fringe things. I wanted to be a part of the community and I wanted to spread the ideology within the community. And you can't do that if you're scaring people away. But the hate he spewed became too much. In 2016, Ernest left Montana and the PLE. It was the violence and the negativity that eventually led me out. People get into the, this mindset and they have friends that they find online who share that mindset and they question the other side so intensely that it takes a lot to get them away. Now, Greg Nawalnik is a clinical psychologist at the University of Kansas Health System. He says extremism is like an addiction and the best way to help someone is to talk to them. It starts with reminding them of your actual deep, long-standing emotional connection or relation to them. Turning off social media can help too. When Ernest left Montana, he unplugged. And today, he continues to reckon with his past, starting a platform to help LGBTQ people escape the world of hate. I do what I do to try to educate. Uh, I, I don't want people following in my footsteps. Reporting in Kansas City, Ariel Rothfield, 41 Action News.